Good morning, everyone. Today is the beginning of Holy Week, and we join together to think of that most holy week. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. On this Monday of Holy Week, we begin our journeys with Jesus and the disciples as they begin their walk towards Jerusalem. But first, we begin in Bethany. We walk the path of sorrows and on Sunday we will walk out into the garden to celebrate resurrection. But until then, let us join with the fearful and the wondering. Let us pray for the suffering and the dying and together walk that most holy walk of the Christian year. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there and Mary served, while Lazarus was one of those reclining at table with him. Mary took a litre of costly perfumed oil made from genuine aromatic nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and dried them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then Judas the Iscariot, one of his disciples, and the one who would betray him said, why was this oil not sold for 300 days wages and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and held the money bag and used to steal the contributions. So Jesus said, leave her alone. Let her keep this for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. There's a juxtaposition here. Mary's filled with compassion Judas with uneasiness and fear. They are both very close to him. They followed him, loved him, supported him. One anoints him, one kisses him. St. Augustine explains how we can anoint Christ's body. He says, anoint Jesus' feet by a life pleasing to God. Follow in his footsteps. If you have an abundance, give it to the poor. In this way, you can wipe the feet of the Lord. At this time, the poor are even more vulnerable than normal. Churches like Richmond Craig Miller and many others throughout the world whose ministry reaches out to feed the most vulnerable are not accessing or being gifted the food and toiletries that they often are. Now is the time to reach out to help. And we, like many other churches around the world, can help you get food and gifts to where they need to go. There are two sides to everyone. Each person has a bit of Mary and a bit of Judas in them. There is the worry that paralyzes us and takes us inwards and selfishness. And there is another side, hope and love, which encourages us to reach out. We must not let one absorb the other when we also feel vulnerable and frightened and uncertain. This Holy Week, I am going to end each thought with a poem. This day's poem is the poem Prayer by Carol Ann Duffy. Some days, although we cannot pray, a prayer utters itself. 
So a woman will lift her head from the sieve of her hands and stare at the minims sung by a tree, a sudden gift. Some nights, although we are faithless, the truth enters our hearts, that small familiar pain. Then a man will stand stock still, hearing his youth in the distant Latin chanting of a train. Pray for us now, grade one piano scales. Console the lodger looking out across a Midlands town, then dusk, and someone calls a child's name as though they named their loss. Darkness outside. The radio's prayer. Rockall, Malin, Dogger, Finister, and a prayer to finish. Jesus Christ, Rabbi of Nazareth, guide our actions, caution our. our outbursts and encourage our hearts to love you as we ought this day and every day. Amen. <laughs>